The Life and Sad Ending of Paul Michael Glazer Paul Michael Glazer was born on March 25, 1943, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, U.S. We are all born and raised with a big dream, with Paul Michael Glazer's experience with a vast sky. It all has difficulties and challenges. Paul is the acting legend, best known to generations of fans as the heartthrob detective David Starsky in Starsky and Hutch. He has also appeared in the television soap operas Love is a Many Splendored Thing and Love of Life. Paul has guest starred in countless TV series and movies, most notably Fiddler on the Roof, Butterflies Are Free, Phobia, Something's Gotta Give with Diane Keaton, and Starsky and Hutch, the movie. Not just a familiar face on the screen, Paul is a classically trained actor who began his career at the Royal Shakespeare Company working with the likes of Max Adrian and Laurence Olivier. He has appeared in over 50 roles on Broadway, off-Broadway, regional, repertory, of course as starring in UK pantos, oh yes he has. Met first wife Elizabeth Glazer in June 1975, while they driving down Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood. They smiled at each other, then Paul motioned for Elizabeth to pull over, where he invited her out for Chinese food. Elizabeth moved in with Paul three months later in September 1975. Breaking a silence, Starsky, star, wife share their family's painful battle against AIDS. They were a couple to be envied. Elizabeth Glazer was the exhibit director of the Los Angeles Children's Museum. Paul Michael Glazer was an international star from TV's, Starsky and Hutch, who had found a second career as a movie director. In 1981, they were expecting their first child. Then their world started crumbling. Elizabeth Glazer was rushed to Cedars Sinai Medical Center, hemorrhaging heavily in her ninth month. Doctors safely delivered her daughter. But Elizabeth's bleeding wouldn't stop. And, for the next four hours, she was transfused with seven pints of blood. It wasn't until three weeks later that Elizabeth Glazer read a newspaper article describing the risk at that time of developing acquired immune deficiency syndrome from transfusions. Panicked, she called her physician. He was calm and reassuring. Elizabeth, he said, your nightmare is over. But her family's nightmare had just begun. Four years later, daughter Ariel became stubbornly sick with something the doctors couldn't pin down. When doctors finally tested Ariel for the human immunodeficiency virus, which causes AIDS, the Glazers were told the test was just a precaution. But Ariel tested positive. As each family member subsequently was tested, the Glazers would confront more horrors and horrible truth. Elizabeth, who also tested HIV positive, had passed the virus to Ariel and their one-and-a-half-year-old son. Only Paul was not infected. Ariel, the daughter whom Elizabeth had lovingly and innocently breastfed for eight months, died three years later, right after her seventh birthday. So far, Elizabeth, who has been taking the drug AZT for a year and a half, and their son, now a healthy, wiggly five-year-old, have not developed AIDS, but the family lives daily with the specter of the disease. Tragically, the Glazer's story is not all that uncommon anymore. Across the country, there are hundreds of AIDS families, people whose lives have been invaded by a deadly enemy not through drug abuse or homosexual contact, but through a simple blood transfusion. Although Elizabeth has worked diligently and effectively behind the scenes for AIDS education and research, the family would not be going public now, but for the circumstance of their celebrity. For four years, the Glazers have tried to create a safe, normal life for their children away from the public eye. But now, on the first anniversary of their daughter's death, that cocoon has been threatened. Tabloid reporters dug up the story of Paul Michael Glazer's AIDS family and, the Glazers have been told, a story is scheduled to appear in the National Enquirer. The Enquirer refuses to comment. We appealed to the Enquirer, says Paul. We begged them not to run the story, but they said it was newsworthy. 
for Paul and me, says Elizabeth. This is very frightening to imagine that people we don't know will find out the most private parts of our lives. But our fear is the greatest for our son. He does not know that he isn't a normal, healthy little boy, and he doesn't know that his mother isn't a normal, healthy mom. It's our right to tell him when he is strong enough and old enough to handle the information. Now we may not have that choice. So the Glazers decided to come forward to tell their painful but courageous story to view. Ariel was any father's fantasy of a daughter, an extremely bright, artistically gifted child with a lively imagination. Her brother, who's the image of Huckleberry Finn, was a rambunctious toddler. Together, they turned their parents' stately, Westside Mediterranean home into one big playground. The atrium was littered with bicycles and basketball hoops. The living room had a rocking horse. Happy face stickers were pasted on the arm of an antique mission chair. Often, Elizabeth, the former museum director who quit her job to be with the children, would entertain the entire preschool on rainy days. But four years ago, while the family was in Miami where Paul was working, Ariel suddenly became so sick they rushed her to a hospital. Though Ariel's red blood cell count was dangerously low, Doctors assured them she would recover. Eight months later, she still wasn't well. An immunologist suggested they test for HIV. Don't worry, their doctor said. We just have to rule out all possibilities. Then they got the phone call that would change their lives. That day in May we found out a reality that an entire family was going to be lost, she says, reflecting the pessimism of the time. We had been dealt the worst hand of cards any family could have gotten. I thought about throwing my hands up and giving up. But we decided to play that hand offensively. Paul has found it harder than Elizabeth to share their family's story. It makes it even more real for him, says a family friend. People who don't know him will now treat him differently. He will be burdened with their pity. He hates pity. Paul himself says that, this can't be a story about the tragedy. This has to be a story about how we rise above our fears, how we all have to be stronger than we ever thought we could be. Our family situation shows how hard it is to get this disease, says Paul. Although Ariel had contracted the virus through breastfeeding and their son in the womb, Paul was unscathed. Until we found out our family was infected. He says, Elizabeth and I had a natural sexual relationship. I wasn't infected by either child, and they did everything a child can do to a parent. They bled on me, they crapped on me, they hugged me and they kissed me. And I still don't have it. But society was a lot warier. At the time, the newspapers were full of horror stories about AIDS families being shunned, their homes burned and their kids kicked out of schools. Their doctors said the world was not ready for their family, and advised them only to tell school officials. Instead, they pulled Ariel out of school so they wouldn't have to face ostracism. To this day, I regret that Ariel did not finish nursery school, says Elizabeth. They withdrew. Elizabeth stopped making new friends. She stopped reading the newspaper and watching TV because the AIDS reports only scared her. I began to feel like a leper, she says. If I went to a home and drank a glass of water, I worried that they wouldn't wash it carefully enough. I felt I was dangerous. Fearfully, the Glazers told their closest friends and parents of their children's playmates. Frightened of a disease without a cure, some friends stopped calling. Others refused to let their kids play with either Ariel or her brother. Elizabeth had recurring nightmares that all her friends would link arms and block their house, never letting anybody in to see them. I was angry at people's rejections, says Paul, who played golf so ruthlessly that he injured his back. I was afraid we would be totally isolated. Back then it was the Black Plague. After Ariel died last August, Elizabeth plunged all her energy into starting a private foundation to fill the funding gap until the federal money began to flow.
even if the federal government said they were going to give $20 million for pediatric AIDS research, it would be a year and a half before that money was in the hands of researchers. It would be too late for a lot of kids. It was too late for my daughter. Talking about Glacier's love life, he married a woman named Elizabeth Meyer in 1980. Unfortunately, she died in 1994 after having contracted HIV through a blood transfusion years ago. The couple had two kids, daughter Ariel and son Jake. Ariel, who was also HIV positive, died in 1988. After his wife's death, Glazer served as the chairman of the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, which his wife had co-founded earlier. In 1996, he married Tracy Barone, a producer. The two had a child, daughter Zoe, before separating in 2007. Glazer filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences as the reason for ending their decade-long marriage. That's what he went through with Paul Michael Glazer. He is 77 years old and has aged. Health is not the same as before. Wish him and all of you good health and find the meaning of a fulfilling life.